so today we are talking about exponential growth um, and exponential decay. So this is our next type of function, exponential functions. Welcome. So exponential growth and exponential decay. So let's say the coronavirus, because that's what everybody's talking about right now. Um, the number of coronavirus cases in Broward County each week is represented in the table below. Um, I mean, I say, look at the little Cardi B meme. Anyway, so week one, week two, week three, week four, coronavirus, right? So let's say week one, we discovered that there was 30 people in the, in the, um, in the Broward County, in Broward County that have coronavirus. And then there's 60 people, um, the next week in week two, and then we see 120 people and then we see, um, 240 people. What is the relationship between the number of cases discovered each week. Well, it's times two is doubling, right? So when something is growing at a rate, right? Um, at like doubling, tripling, something like that, we call that exponential growth. So that's an example of exponential growth. So um, the basic model for an exponential function is f of x equals b to the power of x. Um, this only works if b is greater than zero and b cannot be equal to one. And then b cannot be equal to one because if I just keep putting something one to the power of 15, one to the power of a million, it's still gonna be one, again, a constant function. So that doesn't work out for us. All right, so let's talk about power. So um, the x is, the variable is the power, it is the exponent. That's what qualifies something to be an exponential function. The variable is the exponent. And then the base is gonna be uh, the big number and because you know it's all about that base, by that base. All right, I keep making that joke and it's bad every single time. So this is the parent function. Let's talk about what the general graph looks like. So usually we use two to the power of X to demonstrate that. So we're gonna plug in some table values. So if I plug in negative two into that graph, I'm gonna get one fourth. If I plug in negative one, I get one half, zero, one, one, two, two, four, Three, eight. Okay, so what that looks like on a graph, I'm going to go ahead and plot those points so that we can see. And we see that it's steadily rising, okay? And it goes up pretty quickly, actually. So the domain of this function, look, it keeps going left and it keeps going right forever and ever. So the domain of this function is going to be all real numbers. Remember, arrows on both sides, all real numbers for your domain. Negative infinity to positive infinity, okay? So it matters set notation versus interval notation, all right? My range, it's it's low and it's not going lower than that zero if you notice. So y is greater than zero or zero to infinity. Again, set versus interval notation. What is an asymptote? Okay, so an asymptote um, is a line that the function approaches, but it never actually touches that line. So if we're looking at that graph, you see how it's swooping low? Um, you can see that it's approaching the blue line on the screen, but it's not actually, it's never actually gonna touch it. I know it looks like it's touching it, um, but it's never actually touching it. So what is the asymptote of this function, f of x equals two to the power of x? Well, it's the x-axis, but the equation of that line is called y equals zero. Remember, horizontal lines, y equals a number, and that's on the zero, so that's why that works. Bing. Anyway. Um, so you have two types of exponential functions. You have an exponential growth function and you have exponential decay function. So exponential growth is when something is growing, it's getting higher and higher and higher, uh, or and exponential decay is when something is decreasing. All right, so um, exponential growth, the B value has to be greater than one. So that means that as it increases, X increases. So examples of what that might look like are those. So I know you have to read the graph from left to right. So you have to read the graph from left to right. What are the numbers doing as, you re as you're reading it from left to right? And both of those are examples of growth. Even though that second one, I know you're looking at it, you're like, is that growing? Yes, it is because from left to right, it's getting higher and higher. Decay, decay has to be, the B value has to be between zero and one, between zero and one, the B value has to be, okay? And that means that uh, it decreases as X increases. So from left to right, it's going down. From left to right, it's going down, okay? I don't know if this is left to right or if it's gonna be right to left. We'll see when I put the video up. <laughs> okay, so let's determine. F of X equals 10 times three fourths to the power of X. What is the B value? You have to determine what the B value is in this problem. The B value is always gonna be the number touching the exponent of X, okay? So in this case, that's three fourths. Is three fourths greater than one, orange, or is it between zero and one, pink? 
Think about it. Three fourths. This is what the graph of that function is going to look like. What is it doing from left to right? Is it getting bigger from left to right? Is it getting smaller from left to right? These are the numbers on a table. Are the numbers in the blue row, what are they doing? Are they getting smaller or are they getting bigger? Those are the three ways you can determine if something is a growth or a decay. Look at the B value of the equation, three fourths. Look at the graph from left to right. Is it rising or is it falling? Look at the table. Are the numbers rising or falling in the Y column or Y row? Clearly, this is a decay, okay? B value three fourths is 0 0.75, less than one. It's definitely falling. The orange line is getting smaller, is going lower and lower. And those numbers are definitely getting lower and lower in the blue row, okay? 0 0.6, 0 0.3, smaller. This is a decay, okay? Um, so growth or decay, what is my B value? Everybody tell me, my B value is? Okay, good. <laughs> um, my B value is 1.05. Is that greater than one or is it between zero and one? Clearly, okay, um, it is going to be greater than one. But let's, let's talk about what that looks like on a graph. So we're going to use our little TI calculator. I'm using my smart view so that you guys can see. And I'm typing the function in uh, 100 parentheses, 1.05. I'm going to use the little caret button. Um, to put a power of x in there. So first we're going to look at the table because remember the other way is for us to look at the table values and see um, are those values getting from top to bottom, are those values getting bigger or are they getting smaller? Clearly they're getting bigger, right? So now look at the graph, but oh my gosh, those numbers are so big that they're actually not fitting on my graph. So I'm going to adjust my graph so that I can um, see and figure out what it looks like. So that's what I'm doing right now. First I went to window, but then I realized that's not actually the way that I'm supposed to do that. And um, I actually wanna go to zoom and I'm gonna go to zoom fit. So you could just press zero, or you could like scroll up to the zero, it doesn't really matter. And boom, look at that. That's an exponential function, but a really like zoomed in version. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go to zoom and I'm gonna zoom out so that I can see a, um, a better picture of it, of the graph. And from left to right, I want to look at that graph. Is it rising from left to right or is it falling from left to right? And it is definitely rising from left to right. Look at that, that beautiful exponential function right there. So it's rising from left to right. I automatically know that's definitely going to be a growth. Um, so on your own, do these ones in your head real quick. Decide whether f of x is growth or decay and then decide whether p of x is a growth or decay as I sip. <laughs> All right, you should have decided. It's definitely going to be a growth, definitely going to be a decay. Woo. Okay, so let's talk about if we have word problems. I know everybody loves word problems. So this is the growth or decay model for exponential functions. Um, it's a of t equals a parentheses one plus or minus r close parentheses to the power of t. You use the plus if it's a growth. You use the minus if it's a decay. That should just make sense. Okay, so final amount. Um, so when the purple part of the problem is your final amount. So that's what it's gonna be equal to. Um, the green, A, is your initial amount. So how much was in the account or how much people did we start with? How many animals did we start with? How much money did we start with? Uh, R is the rate of increase or the rate of decrease. It just depends on the problem. Um, and this has to be in decimal form. We'll talk about that more. And then obviously T is time, so the units of time. If you put $500 into a bank account that pays 4.25% interest a year, how much will you have in the account after five years? Well, I'm looking at my problem, my initial amount, okay? That's definitely gonna be 500. And then the rate at which I'm putting that into the account, I need to change that percentage to a decimal. I know you're like, it's already a decimal, yeah, but I still have to move that decimal place over two spaces to the left to be able to put it into the problem and get the right answer. So I'm gonna um, go ahead and do that. Um, so that's how we got 0 0.0425 instead of just using 4.25, it makes a big difference. And then the amount of time, it told me that it was gonna be in there for five years, so I'm gonna put that in five. You put that straight into your calculator, just like that, 500 parentheses, one plus 0 0.0425, close the parentheses to the power of five, okay? And when you simplify that, 
you're going to go ahead and get 600 approximately 615 dollars and 67 cents remember to round to the nearest hundredths place because you need your pennies right every all the coins count honey all right um let's go on to the next example we're almost done here i think we have three examples left the value of a truck bought for twenty um nine thousand dollars decreases at 9.5 percent each year write and solve an exponential function that would give you the value of the truck after 17 years okay so the initial amount is twenty nine thousand. i'm using the minus sign in this problem that's important because it says the value of the truck decreases at 9.5 percent each year so to change that percentage into a decimal i'm going to go ahead and move the decimal space over two spaces to the left so i'm going to get 0 0.095 and we're going to put 17 in the place of t because it told me 17 years uh a car is one of the worst investments you can make because as soon as you drive it off the lot the price depreciates so i put that straight into my calculator boom boom five thousand three hundred fourteen dollars and three cents approximately is what it would be worth after those 17 years i doubt even that to be honest with you um okay next example two more examples so zio mara invests five thousand dollars in an account that pays 6.25 percent interest per year after how many years will her investment be worth ten thousand dollars so this problem is a little bit interesting okay so um i already know in this problem how much uh, she's gonna make right she it says she's gonna make ten thousand dollars right if, and she originally put five thousand dollars and the rate at which she's putting it in is six point two five percent but i'm changing that to a decimal by moving the decimal space over two spaces to the left and i'm using the addition sign because i want to know how much it's growing right so the problem is is i don't know how much time it's going to take for it to get there and that is very good so we have to find what that x1 is going to be okay so what i did was i plugged everything into the problem i divided by five thousand because i want to get that that uh exponent part of the problem by itself so ten thousand divided by five thousand gives me two so right now i have two equals 1.0625 to the power of x but what is x how do i get that x by itself this is a very interesting question you do not know how to do this yet at least if you're in my class and we're at this lesson you don't know how to do this yet okay um so right now we're gonna guess and check you're gonna plug a number into x and we're gonna see if we can figure out approximately how many years it would take for that money to double okay so we can try a few numbers i want you to take your calculator and i want you to try a few numbers i will wait pause the video okay um i will give you a clue it is between zero and 20 okay um so try a number pause the video see if you can figure it out what number could we use for x to make the sentence true well, you will find if you plug in 11.5 years, so 11 and a half years, approximately is how long it's going to take for that money to double at that rate in that account starting at $5,000. Um, they don't make accounts like that no more. Baby, they sure don't. Okay. Uh, last but not least, try this one on your own. Pause the video. At the beginning of 1981, the australian humpback whale population was 350 and has decreased at a rate of 14 percent each year since then what is the population of whales now the first thing i'm going to tell you is that you need to figure out the amount of time because it didn't tell you okay so we're going to use 2019 because this problem was from last year <laughs> so 2019 minus 1981 we're going to use 38 as our time you got this. So you're gonna plug everything into the problem, right? Solve. It's e it's increasing at a rate of 14%. So I change 14 to a decimal, increasing using the plus sign. In that calculator, voila, is approximately 50,000. And change, 868. <laughs> You like my little whale gifs, <laughs> gifs, whatever you call them. Anyway, what am I going to tell you to do? I'm going to tell you to go back through this uh, presentation with a sheet of paper. See if you can get the examples on your own without my help.
And if not, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.